Hi, today we're going to do a short video on the white strainer. On the left hand side of the screen you can see a 2D image of a white strainer. If we click on the button here, it will start to load up the white strainer 3D model. It shouldn't take too long because the model itself is actually quite small. The model is now loaded and as you can see it has a very, very unique shape. The Y strainer is called the Y strainer because it has the shape of a Y. A flowing medium will actually flow in here through the suction port and out here through the discharge port. And what's happening inside is that there's a strainer inside and as the flow comes in any suspended particles within the flow will be held within the strainer or prevented from flowing further out of the discharge. So let's have a look, let's explode the model and then we can have a look at the strainer itself and some of the components. We go down here, we have a drain plug for draining fluid out of the wire strainer. That's this plug here. We've got some bolts, we've got some washers, we've got a gasket or a seal. The gasket or the seal here is to prevent flow coming past the drain plug when the drain plug's in. The drain plug itself is metal. The plate here is also metal. When you get two metal plates together, they don't often seal, so you'll have a softer material which you place between the two metals to stop the fluid or the flowing medium from leaking out. The same principle applies here. This is another gasket. Looks to be a textile gasket or a cardboard gasket. And this gasket will sit between two metal plates, one here and one here. And as those two metal plates are sandwiched together, the gasket will be squeezed between them. And this will effectively form a seal, which prevents the flowing medium from leaking out of the strainer. And in the very middle bit here, we've got the strainer. The strainer itself is incredibly simple. What's going to happen is the flow is going to flow in the top through this hole and it's going to come through into the strainer. Then what's going to happen is it's going to want to flow out to the discharge port and the discharge port is on the opposite side of this strainer, what looks a bit like a wire mesh or a wire fence. It will flow through and any suspended particles that are larger than these holes or these perforations will be restrained or be kept within the strainer. Whereas the flow itself, which is now clean, will come out of the strainer and to the discharge port. So now let's just assemble everything again. We can see that there's some nuts and stuff at the top here in the main strainer casing, but other than that, there's not much of interest. We'll assemble everything. Now the gasket, as you can see, has been sandwiched between the two metal plates, so there's not going to be any fluid or flowing medium leaking out of here. The other seal, which might have been an o-ring or a gasket, underneath this drain plug, is now sandwiched between the drain plug and the plate. This again stops any flowing medium leaking out. Now we'll go up, and if we go to the suction port, we can go in through the suction port and have a look the strainer. Now we're inside the strainer and as you can see to get to the discharge port which is here we're going to need to go through the strainer. That means that any larger objects that are bigger than these holes or these perforations are going to get stuck and the fluid which has been cleaned will flow out to wherever it's going. But why would we even have, <laughs> that wasn't a play on words there, why would we have a Y strainer? Well, the reason is because wherever the fluid is flowing to, it might be a heat exchanger or a pump or even a tap or anything, we don't want the fluid to arrive dirty. For a heat exchanger, if there's bits of rust or bits of mud, any suspended particles flowing to the heat exchanger, there's a high probability that they might get stuck to the heat exchanger. If they get stuck to the heat exchanger, they're actually reducing the heat exchanger efficiency because when they stick to the heat exchanger surfaces, 
the heat transfer rate is reduced, therefore the efficiency is also reduced. If we have fluid flowing in here and then going out the discharge port to a pump, which you can often see, especially in freshwater systems, which this looks very much like a freshwater system filter or a sweet water system filter, what will happen is it will flow to the pump and any suspended particles, bits of rust, etc., they will foul the pump. The pump internals will no longer work as well as they should. Pumps normally have very fine clearances. This means that any bits of mud or goo or rust or anything that goes into those pumps could potentially damage the pump and it will potentially reduce the efficiency. Now you don't want this because it's a lot easier to take out a strainer and clean it and put it back in again than it is to, for example, repair the pump or clean the heat exchanger. So it's a way essentially of keeping the system working in an optimal condition and when things are not working as well as they should, when the strainer is blocked, you can quickly undo the bolts, as we'll see here, and then open the casing and get the strainer out. Now what we're actually seeing here is the bolts came out and then the drain plugs coming out. This is perhaps not exactly the way you would normally do this. What would happen is, if you wanted to work on the Y strainer, you completely isolate the strainer first. That means you close the valve here on the suction side, close the valve here on the discharge side, and then what I would personally do is I would slacken each of these four bolts off, these main four. So the four bolts that normally sit in these faces here, I'd loosen them off, and then what I'd do is get a plastic mallet, tap the side around here, and if there's pressure on the filter, it will actually lift off the plate. And what you'll find is as long as the valves have closed correctly, you'll only get a little bit of fluid or whatever the flowing medium is coming out. If the valves haven't sealed correctly or if they're not closed, if someone's made a mistake, then obviously you'll get a continued gush of fluid or any flowing medium coming out. And if the bolts are only loose, it means you can tighten them back up. If you take the drain plug out, for example, and the system's still under pressure, you're going to have a very difficult time getting the drain plug back in again, especially if the system's at sort of six bar. Normally, for a freshwater system like this, I'm assuming this is for a freshwater system, you can expect three to four bar. But even then, three or four bar of pressure is quite a lot, especially when you're trying to get something back in, like a drain plug. Now, if you are ever working on one of these wire strainers and you have to take them apart, is you should have a spare gasket to hand just in case this one here is damaged. If it is damaged, you're going to need to slowly scrape it off. And ideally, when you're scraping, you don't want to be scraping in this direction to get the gasket off. What you want to be doing is scraping in this direction. That way, if you do put a scratch in the metal plate, you're not going to take it all the way from, for example, here, the interior to the exterior. That's creating a path for the fluid to flow down and escape. If you scratch this way and you scratch too deep, the fluid's probably not going to be able to leak into this area. And even if it does, it's only going to leak along here. It's not going to escape. So you need to be careful of that when you're taking it apart. In addition, if you're cleaning the gasket, the new one should be coated in copper slip or a Vaseline or a suitable lubricant so that you can stick it onto the lower side of the Y strainer and then you can attach the plate to the gasket and hopefully everything should seal correctly. If you are doing this for a freshwater system though, just beware that whatever you are using, especially if it's a grease of some sort, this could potentially be drinking water and you don't really want to apply something like oil or anything that's carcinogenic to the gasket, which is then potentially going to leak out into the freshwater system and people are going to drink it. So just keep that in mind. There are biological products that you can buy which will also serve as good greasing medium. Just remember also with the gasket that when you're installing the gasket you want to cross tighten the bolts. You don't want to just clamp two of the bolts together because what you'll do is the bolts that you've been clamped together will squeeze the gasket and they'll tend to either crush it so that the seal doesn't form properly or you'll create a crease in the gasket and this is a really good place for the fluid or the flowing medium to leak out. So what you want to do is cross tighten. That means top left, bottom right, 
top right, bottom left. And go around and just tighten like that, slowly, slowly, until the gasket's been squeezed and the pressure is applied evenly across the entire gasket. If you don't follow this approach, I can almost guarantee that the gasket will leak. You'll see the strainers themselves in many different applications. The reason you'll see them in many applications is because Y strainers are very easy to clean, they're very easy to maintain. Normally, the strainer itself is actually a fine or a medium fine filter, not generally very coarse. Y strainers can't really filter as great a volume as basket strainers can. However, they can operate at very high temperatures and very high pressures. You'll actually see this type of strainer in steam systems operating up to temperatures of 500 degrees and significant pressures. You'll actually see these strainers in, for example, power stations. Contrary to popular opinion, you can't actually just install the Y strainer in any position. Actually, I'll correct myself there. You can install it in any position, be it vertical or horizontal, etc but it doesn't mean it's going to work as it should. For steam systems, you actually want to install the wire strainer on its side so that any water condensate that forms within the strainer will drain away. You don't want to install it like this because the condensate will accumulate in the bottom of the strainer. If you do install it for fluids though, you do want to install the wire strainer in this shape because then any bits of rust or any particles they will flow naturally down to the bottom of the strainer and this prevents them blocking the discharge port at the top here. Let's have a quick look at the cross section then before we go just to show you guys where it is and the visual appearance it has. The cross sections, I've tried to do them for as many models as possible. Obviously it's nice when you can explode the models and assemble them but it's also nice if you can just Put a knife through them and have a look at the cross section. I find it makes a lot more sense sometimes. But there we go, there's a cross section of the Y strainer. Suction port is here, comes in through the strainer and then out to the discharge port. And any suspended particles that are in the flow will be held here. Click on each of these icons, you'll see you get a bit of information about each part of the strainer what it does etc. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much for your time.